in that, all right? They helped us out doing that. So there's always been this uh, presence in, in my uh, life uh, about the living earth. So there's this imprint of life in, actually in the stone. And that, uh, that is kind of an iconic uh, introduction to the planet. Uh, where I uh, went to church with a church in the round uh, that the priest there was kind of a modern uh, modernist, and so they made this round church. And uh, my father worked for Unirail Tire Company, so he made tires all the time. So there's another round thing in my life. And so this this roundness and the earth being round, it's it's all it, it all came around to making circles in the land across uh, all, all, all of the planet. Uh, so uh, I became a stonemason uh, because rock was always present in my life. I, I tried to be a photographer, but all I did was take pictures of rocks all the time. So uh, I said, OK. Uh, and uh, so as a classical stonemason, I, I, I taught myself, self-taught myself uh, all about sacred architecture and uh, the, the building techniques of the convicts and such and, and just did an exploration of all the sacred sites of the planet and that led to well why why why, why was a church place where it was uh, what were the various methods used uh, what were their worldview and uh, over you know whatever 50 years of, of doing this uh, I've gotten a pretty good handle on, on sacred sites, what that's all about. Uh, so, I, in working with it as a stonemason, uh, I learned that if I worked with the uh, native angle of the rock itself, the fracture angle, which is different for every every kind of stone, uh, I was uh, I could make more money. So I didn't have to cut so much. So, but then I was I was looking at this angle in the rock, and I, then I was I, I, I was familiar with the topography of the area, the, the landforms, how the rivers came together, and I found that same angle in the river forms. So, uh, knowing sacred geometry uh, from my work and and uh, exploration of uh, sacred space, the uh, uh, that's what was employed. Sacred geometry was employed in, in the Gothic cathedral construction in ancient Greece and Rome, um, in, in ancient Egypt as well. So uh, I, I said, well, if, if there's sacred geometry in my own body, you know, with the five proportion of our, our own bodies, you know, the Fibonacci man, and probably in that, uh, there. There has to be some geometry in the earth as well. So it seems to be like a practical uh, kind of expression of uh, nature. So the Great Lakes themselves uh, have all the earmarks of these uh, sacred sites that I've come across. And that's what we're exploring today is how the Great Lakes is like a cathedral, it's like nature's cathedral. So uh, let's you know, get to the first slide there. Yeah. Right now, uh, the Great Lakes is, is looked at as kind of a resource, if you will, uh, this tremendous water resource that uh, is coveted by the southwest of uh, the United States. It's coveted by Nestle's. It's coveted by the shipping shipping companies and for all the ore and everything and uh, you know, bauxite or whatever the geographic uh, benefit that you can extract from these areas, but it's also, it's a geopolitical place. So you know, here we, uh, we have the sacred place, uh, the Great Lakes, it's a, it's a miraculous form, and where else do you find this anywhere on the planet? Nowhere. Uh, but it's divided. Now, uh, you know, well, we've all traveled now, you know, if we go from uh, Michigan down to Ohio, we know when we're in Ohio, we know when we're in Indiana, we know when we're in Illinois or Wisconsin, there's a different like uh, vibration, there's there are different laws, there's different uh, nationalities, there's different politics, you know, so all, all those uh, different geopolitical uh, worldviews, if you will, uh, have a, a certain energetic signature to them. So 
those those signatures are all dividing up the chopping up the uh, what was a unified water into uh, multiple different uh, geopolitical zones. So the, the the waters themselves don't have this feeling of unity because they're divided into two nations, one province, eight states, five lakes, lakes, but you know one pure sphere of water. So I'm uh, yeah, so next slide. Yeah. Uh, so you know, here we have uh, you know the native perspective of uh, I, I you know I don't ask me to pronounce these these words. Oh, that's really the, the Ojibwa really you know they, they, they have these long some long words that I just yeah, but Kichigumi is in there. So each, uh, <clears throat> on the shores of Kichigumi by the big sea shining waters was a. Uh, Wigwam of the Combs. You know, we, we know that home by Longfellow. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then we have this, this watershed around the Great Lakes. I mean, look at the size of that watershed. It's it's not the Mississippi River that's filling up these lakes. It's just these, these small rivers. You know, where is all this water coming from? Oh, well, they say glaciation and such. But it's just a miraculous form to have this amount of water in this small of an area. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, you know a, a simple uh, question that I have that uh, I haven't quite figured that out yet. I ask it often. Uh, it almost seems as though through the, the centrifugal force of the spin of the planet, perhaps some of those Canadian lakes, which are all on on the Canadian shield of granites, are are, are being spun down into the the, the the lowest point, this low basin of uh, Great Lakes and filling them up in that way. I, I did notice that uh, the Great Lakes rose four inches a couple of years back, and that's when there was a big melt up in the uh, Canadian uh, uh, tundra up there. The next one. So now I'm I'm engaged in this. So here we have this. Uh, pentagram, if you will, and I'm asking people. Uh, I'm trying to. This is a project that I, uh, I called Pure Spirit Waters org. It's a uh, it's a website I've developed just to um, uh, kind of explain these different concepts of of the Great Lakes as a sacred site. And uh, the the end, the purpose of all this is to uh, look at the Great Lakes as as some place that's holy sacred waters, uh, to think about them. And as a connective, uh, con connected consciousness that we are as, 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 as human, you know, we're, we're, we have the power of God, they say, uh, you know, with our consciousness to affect change. And uh, we can, you know, our emotions affect the weather, for instance. Common knowledge thing in the spiritual realms, but uh, so where's this pen come from? Uh, this pentagram, and what is the pentagram? Uh, you know, it's oh the Pentagon, and uh, that there's a Wiccan association with it. Uh, you know, the casting of spells and such. But uh, the pentagram or pentagon is is really a life. It's a life form. Uh, it has this relationship of phi between all its various angles and what different lines that you can draw through it. And, and phi is a uh, Fibonacci series, uh, one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus one is five, and a lot like that, eight, 13. It, it, it's, a, it's a one to uh, 1.618 ratio, dot, dot, dot. Uh, one of those irrational things that, um, uh, the, the Greeks were really big on, and a lot of sacred geometry is is employed, or uh, sacred space employs this. Uh, it, it's employed just by using your own body to measure something. So indigenous people, when they're creating their teepees or whatever, they use their hands and body to measure it out, and that mm -hmm. just naturally created a a, a five based shape. And you can find that consistently in all in all indigenous cultures that didn't have a tape measure, or, you know, but they, they use their bodies. <coughs> this link, that's all I that works all. Right. And so with this particular uh, penta, 
I was in looking at these uh, landforms, where these geometries uh, come from. So uh, I, I looked at the, the two points of uh, Chicago or the bottom of Lake Michigan and the, and the tip of at Duluth there of uh, the Lake Superior. And that referencing those two points to the Sioux Locks or Sioux St. Marie, which is at the pinch point of all those lakes, uh, generated that pentagram, uh, that pentagon form. And uh, so uh, that uh, uh, continued another process. Well, why, why is this being expressed? You know, how, how come, you know? And, and I, I see that happening more and more uh, uh, in my observations of, of, of land forms and uh, nature's forms and the appearance of the pentagram of that, that particular angle. So we go on to the next one. And so you know, what is this? And, uh, so, uh, well, it's water. So how does water, uh, well, how does water associate with the uh, sacred sites, with sacred geometry? And it appears as though water is indeed the progenitor of all these sacred geometries. You see there in the middle, the Great Pyramid. And those, uh, the, the the O is oxygen, and the two H's is two, so H two O. And those those circles that you see of H and O, uh, the, the red line of O is uh, uh, proportionate to what a water molecule is. Mm. And the angle of bonding, the ideal angle of bonding, is what is shown there. So how, you know, the the pent, uh, you can see this upside down. Uh, pointing to uh, the center of, of the uh, oxygen uh, atom uh, is, is implicit to this geometry. Uh, the the uh, Vesica Pisces or the uh, Ichthyus of Christ, which is the two uh, intersecting arcs, are uh, you can see in the upper, just uh, hidden up there, the, the Gothic arch, the entire the Gothic cathedral. Uh, uh, was based on that one form, which is a symbolic, it, symbol, it, it symbolizes Christ because you have these two spheres of earth and, and spirit coming together as a, as a form. So, uh, and that's also, you know, the birth canal, the, you know, it has, it has the eye, it has the eye. It, it, there, there's all kinds of uh, associations that can be drawn with this particular geometric form. So uh, as well, you have the, the seven in there, the, uh, you can see the three points of the pyramid. Uh, that is answered by the four points of the keystone. So the whole uh, fascination with, uh, by the Freemasons of the keystone and the pyramid uh, are implicit to water. So it, it, and, and, the, and the pyramid itself, this is, uh, I'm the only one that's talking about this, is, well, you know, the angle in the pyramid is the same as water. So the, the mm -hmm. pyramid is, is a solid form of water. It's, it's, uh, it's, it was built to interface with the biosphere, with, with the watery, watery biosphere that we live within. So the Great Lakes, uh, you know, tie right into the sacred geometry. It's, it's like water, just because of its, its, its nature, wants to go here in, in certain geometric ways. Mm -hmm. So... Let's go on to the next one, see what we have waiting for us. Are these slides on your site? Yeah, these are all on the pure spirit waters. <laughs> I have a couple of cards for everyone. Oh, you, you looked it up already? That's <laughs> <laughs> The website and he needs to get some cards yeah, right yeah. now. But uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the Great Lakes actually include Lake Champlain. So this is that, uh, that numinous uh, means uh, uh, a spiritual light. And uh, the, these lakes have crisscrossing throughout it. Uh, what are called ley lines. Uh, you see there uh, LEI, uh, Kachina Ley, that one comes out of uh, the southwest. 
uh, First Nation lay comes from uh, Boston and uh, through Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts, and which is a significant place and uh, in that it's the center of the North American tectonic plate, uh, which is what I've written about in my book, Guy and Matrix. Uh, I have written three books so far on, on this subject. And uh, so uh, there's this idea that, you know, what is it? What, you know, what are these phenomena? You know, so we have this fly spiral that, that as far as he coming into uh, Sault Ste. Marie is with a fly pattern. Uh, you get these other alignments, like the one between Montreal, uh, Toronto, London, and, De and Detroit. That's also a, uh, a rail line that goes along there. Hmm. But there's this, uh, we tend to cohere in lines. We tend to cohere in circles and, and, and different geometric shapes are, are, can, be, can be found. Uh, recently, I found a, uh, a ring form over in the Eastern Europe that unites all the high culture cities, you know, like Prague and Berlin and Moscow, and all in, all in, in, in a single ring, uh, Oslo, uh, Helsinki, and uh, St. Petersburg, uh, you know, all in this one ring. Uh, that's, it just is kind of, kind of elegant. It shows how, <clears throat> even though perhaps we unconsciously uh, uh, place cities in, you know, just out of convenience or something, uh, uh, they they cohere in a very uh, geometric way. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's like almost like a, a bee, if you will. Uh, a bee creates a honey honey uh, or a honeycomb and generates hexagons <laughs> just out of its its hive nature. And uh, we too uh, nest into the lithosphere, into the uh, the matrix of the, of the planet itself in geometric ways. So by uh, acknowledging this and seeing this and appreciating this and loving this and 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 seeing these these space as holy, uh, the waters. The, the idea with all this is that the waters, if they're seen as holy and, and acknowledged as holy and appreciated as holy by uh, a, you know, 144,000 souls of, uh, uh, you know, who are awakened to this, that water would uh, get into a structured place, into a structured uh, state of, of renewal and, and create a, a regenesis machine that potentially could um, uh, affect the whole biosphere because just of, of its, its nature and volume and position. On the planet. So let's go through this next one here. See what oh, there's water. Water, water is everywhere. So uh, we have this mitten, the Michigan mitten. Oh, I, I live here. You know, everyone yeah. uses, uses their hand. But, but it's in, in the uh, ancient caves, uh, handprints were shown to acknowledge that this is a sacred place. Uh, the, the the hand of Fatima down there in the lower right with the eye in the center. That's this this is this place of blood by the sacred. This is this place of holy. Uh, that, that spiral uh, spiral hand is a is a Hopi sign. And uh, th there's a topographical uh, a map there that that looks like fingers in a hand. That's in uh, the sacred valley in Colorado called uh, San Luis Valley, uh, acknowledged by. Uh, the Navajo is just being their, their Western sacred lands. Uh, so, and that's also the same uh, topographical map on the top. So uh, when we when we cut water, uh, so this is something I you know, noticed that uh, if I'm drinking out of a fountain, I'll, I'll you know, I, the water tastes one way. If I take my hands and and, and cup it and drink out of my hands instead of out of a cup, there's an entirely different flavor. It, it, it structures it just, just by the nature of the uh, the five proportions that are all within our fingers. Mm. You know, like, like, like uh, you know, this digit here relation to this digit is five, that digit to this digit is five, this digit to this digit is five, this, this digit to this digit is five. You know, so we get this. 
you know, the human body is 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 just uh, you know perfect uh, uh, ratio. You know, our navel to our head to our feet is a defined proportion as well. <laughs> so when you hold water in your hand like that, you're you're imparting this uh, the structuring of of the sacred. And and you know, drinking that you're kind of making the water holy just by touching it. Mm. So we have uh, uh, you, know, you know the Father, the the Son, and uh, the Spirit all all, all within you know, those hands there that are that are you know really bestowing grace upon the Great Lakes. And this is the hand of the Creator that that you know that all, mm. everybody laughs about the Michigan Mint, but that's you know, that's the mark of the sacred. That's the mark of we are we are created in the image and likeness of God. The Bible tells us so. It's, okay, uh, well, then we have a hand. God has a hand, and He's got a much bigger one than us. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we express itself. I guess it's the next line of this. So another uh, another quality of sacred sites is this relationship to above. It's the, as above, so below. That's the, you know, this is an old uh, hermetic adage. Um, so the Lakota people, uh, they have this thing called star knowledge around the great, uh, around the uh, Black Hills. So uh, star knowledge uh, acknowledges that uh, that the star path, like for instance, Pleiades, is reflected on the planet in the form of uh, Mount Harney, uh, which is uh, the highest point on the Black Hills. There's seven seven mountain knobs for Mount Harney, and those are the seven stars of the seven sisters. Mm. And uh, they, they would travel around as a migration every year around the Great, uh, great Lakes, around the, the Black Hills to. Uh, for different ceremonial purposes, they go to uh, Bear's Lodge, also known as Devil's Tower, for a certain time in the year for a Sundance. Uh, in, in each constellation, it was associated with a different place. Uh, in Europe, uh, the Gothic cathedrals were laid out, the Marian Gothic cathedrals were laid out in France in the form of the constellation Virgo. So uh, I said, well, okay, if this is a sacred site, what is the what could possibly be the constellation? And, and there's this constellation called a teapot. I said, well, you know, the Great Lakes kind of looks like a teapot. You know, you got the handle and it's, it's pouring out of the, the St. Lawrence River. And uh, so, you know, what is that? And that's uh, uh, in the uh, constellation of uh, Sagittarius. And that, that far point where the where the water goes out uh, just off the screen, that point that's right there is the center of our galaxy. Oh. And, and and the uh, the spin field I'm showing there is is what the uh, what it, it looks like at the center of our galaxy. Those are all uh, I think it's ten it's, it's a, kind of an anomaly. They're, 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 10 million year old stars <laughs> spinning around the oldest place in our in the, in the galaxy you know, they just can't explain it why there should be these ancient stars that are being pulled in but they're they're new ones so uh so that that the, the whole spin of the great lakes looks like like a, a dynamic like at a center of a galaxy and it, it associates with that. So now the you got this gal with her with her copper bucket. Uh she's now you know in the uh, in the ancestors land across the threshold, but she she walked walked around the entire perimeter of all the Great Lakes, uh burning through, I don't know, 20 or 30 pairs of the bus uh walking shoes in the process. And uh, she would help me carry this bucket and say prayers all the time, all the time she was walking. Whenever she came to water, she'd pick up water, and, and then she, when she came to the next place of water, she'd dump that water in there and pick up the next bucket. So, and then praying to that water and, uh, you know, swinging it with her five body, you know, going along, making, making all things holy. And, Pouring all those prayers back into the water to uh, to return the lakes to their sacred state. 
and acknowledge them as a place that's that water is sacred and, and the Great Lakes is a holy place. So she you know, walked around the so all the Great Lakes, all the Great Lakes. What was the name? Uh, I don't remember that. I'm good. Uh, I, I needed to look this bad up before I. Uh, it, it was a. Uh, it's actually a common uh, English name that she that she carried, but she was a, a Jibwa. Which was the Jibwa was one of the three uh, fires that met here on yeah. this property. Ah, yeah. Okay. There was three councils that met, and it was called the Council of the Three Fire. Okay. And they met right here on this ground. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a, that's a blessing in itself. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's there's an importance to all those historical events in that. Mm -hmm. You know, mapping those with those historical gathering points out on the ground, you know, I, I it would end up being a geometric form. Mm -hmm. this, it just happens that way. Yeah. <laughs> it's how water coalesces. But she the, 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 the water walker took her up. Wow. Uh, the next slide, we so he we established that one. And, uh, so now, uh, now we're getting really, uh, getting really deep here. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this new world view of introducing. So, uh, I, 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 as a, as a, I, I also own the Dow's. And so I, I got involved with exploring uh, earth energy vortexes. And uh, in, the, in the research and, and conversations I've had with other researchers uh, around these vortex forms, it, it, they found a consistent ring form uh, that, that's, that's in the land that you can douse out, you know, going clockwise, counterclockwise, or, or you know, various uh, uh, Shape forms in, in that way, so it's like, well, where, where does that come from? Uh, and why why is that that way? And, and I, I'm looking at it, and looking at this drawing that this one uh, Nick Nick uh, Nick Nelson uh, came up with. And I know that form somewhere. You know, as a geologist, interest, person interested in rocks and kind of uh, insatiable curiosity about things. Uh, I, I remember that the USGS. Uh, model of what the interior of the planet matched that same geometry. So uh, that's what you see in front of you is, is this uh, uh, kind of uh, idealized form of what the interior of the Earth uh, spheres are uh, in, in proportional relationships with one another. And uh, it's just a challenge saying, well, everything has geometry. What is the geometry of this particular uh, shape form that we see there that I'm calling Earth rings? So we have the inner core, outer core mantle, and upper mantle with this uh, ringletite layer of water that's uh, 400 to 600 miles deep. Uh, so uh, it ends up being a, a, a neogram, a nine pointed star. And I started looking around, well, where else can I find this? And I actually found it in the, in the human eye. <laughs> it's like, wow. Um, and it, it's, it's in the, uh, the, the, uh, the orbit patterns of our solar system. It's, it's in the, the star densities of our galaxy. It's, uh, I, I, I consulted with uh, uh, physicists about it and, 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 and quantum uh, gravity looks like this. Uh, recently, we had a um, a gamma ray burst back in October. It, yeah. it was the largest one ever detected by the, you know, modern space instruments. So that everybody trained their instruments on there to see what it looked like, and it manifested in the same pattern. Wow. So it appears to be some kind of gravitational field that that uh, you know, the density. So, but but the same gravitational field is projected out onto the surface in the form of, um, of Earth energy vortexes. But these Earth energy vortexes are in scale. They're, they're from a small one out in your backyard to a, uh, a massive one, uh, like the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes is an expression of the same thing. You can you can overlay that. 
that same pattern on the Great Lakes, and, and, and you see how the various ring patterns relate to the various shapes that are within the Great Lakes themselves. So, uh, I, I've embarked to go around the whole planet and find these shape forms everywhere on the planet. So the arc of Mexico, California resolves into a circle that then encompasses the entire North American tectonic plate as, as a circular form of shelter falls at the center. You have, uh, oh, a lot like the arc of Indonesia with Bali at the bottom of it. The center of that is Mount Pinatibo. Uh, you have uh, the uh, Yellowstone caldera at the center of a ring of mountains, the uh, uh, you know, sided by the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas, going down to Sedona and up to uh, Van Lake Louise in this, in this large 1400 mile wide uh, ring. And uh, coincidentally, that same ring is the same size as the Earth's inner core. So there's this projection from the core to the outside of the, of the planet. And uh, well, what is this, I asked myself. <laughs> uh, and and uh, in the Gaia hypothesis by Lovelock and, and Magulis uh, that, that kind of started this whole Gaia business, uh, of, uh, uh, they said, well, you know, it's a single-celled organism. And that's the best we can come up with is a, is a living organism. It doesn't have a brain, and you know, but it's a it's a cell. So all right. So I took that 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 indicator and started looking at the planet as a cell, Earth cell, and every cell, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, Robert Lipton, uh, uh, he uh, he's a, kind of a new age lecturer. He was a bio. Uh, Bruce Lipton. Yeah. He was a biologist, and his, his pain came from uh, doing this experiment where he renewed, removed the nucleus of, of the cell, and the cell continued to function in the cell. So he, he learned that the membrane was what are the brains of the cell. Mm. So, and the membrane is is uh, populated by all these ring forms that are have uh, have geometry to them, and hexagons, uh, pentagons. Uh, it's just plain circles, some blobs, but they all have this central point that uh, that connects it and, and, and acts as a uh, as a communication uh, uh, corridor between the inner cell and outer cell. And uh, the cell excretes this, takes in this enzyme, does this type of thing, and, and just the monitors and, and manages the cell. So we are we are uh, in this membrane soup of the planet. And our consciousness directly affects this membrane suit. So sacred sites uh, that I found at the center, you know, at the center of the Great Lakes, is an Ojibwa uh, burial ground, and also uh, the largest single stone uh, obelisk that the Masons ever erected, right there in the same graveyard at, at the Sioux Locks, marking the center of uh, the, the Great Lakes. So that's kind of like a, uh, you know, a, one of these integral membrane protein shapes or integral membrane futon shapes that, uh, that, that are communicating, that can be communicated with planet bodies. So uh, by, by or, this very organized water form uh, with a generated uh, coherent consciousness field of, of the sacred, uh, would communicate this this message of, of renewal and regenesis into the cell by by taking in this the, these cosmic frequencies from above. So how does that how does that get delivered? The you know, with with the, the language of sacred geometry, if you can extrapolate more forms out of it, that they're also implicit to that same geometry. So in the, in the study of Plutonic solids, you you have the uh, Five solids, you know, each related to a certain element. And ether is the dodeca, dodecahedron that you see there uh, that, that, that is formed by the 12 plates of, of 12 pentagram, pentagonal plates uh, hmm. that you see uh, depicted there with the Great Lakes being one of the plates of a dodecahedron. 
So if you project that in scale into the planet, it reaches down into the ringwoodite uh, nebula of water. So uh, <laughs> again, this is true. We're getting deep or we're getting really far out here. But uh, the Orion Nebula, 10 minutes? The Orion Nebula is a uh, is making water at a pace of 60 oceans a day. So uh, a tremendous amount of water being being made in nebula. So and nebula is where solar systems come from. So water coalesces, collects dust, it generates uh, planets, solar oh. systems. Everything starts to ignite because it's spin. But that water is trapped inside the planet. So by, by reaching down deep, we are tapping into the original water, the, the nebula water that, that has the, the first memory. And, and from this memory of, that water carries, we can transfer that via our, our integral membrane protein on Earth cell out to the surface. And similarly, we can draw in celestial forces from above because the same the same uh, dodecahedron reaches out to the uh, uh, exosphere, which is where the uh, the, the atmosphere uh, ends. So this is what I, uh, I have done this for the whole planet, finding these various earth rings. Each one of these earth rings is centered by a sacred site uh, honored by uh, native peoples. It suggests to me that that the, the ceremonies that were done by, by uh, the indigenous peoples of the world at these the center of these earth rings that I around the world uh, were were done as an act of, of world maintenance uh, by uh, you know, going going there and doing ceremony and sounding these things. We 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 generated a healthy field, a standing columnar wave. And when you create a medicine wheel, uh, that creates a stand standing column or wave that, that harmonizes the field around it. Uh, so, you know, to me, you should pay the medicine people to go out there and pray. It, it's, it's just so important to pray at sacred sites and honor sacred sites. So this, this greater ring is the Mississippi River. You can see the, so Lake Itasca, where that headwater sign is, and down to the, the Delta of the Mississippi uh, is a is a, uh, a radius, and that radius is the same size as the moon. So you know, it's it's like everything's interconnected. Um, and there's the pure spirit waters right on that. So you get that you get the pure spirit water spinning in that life giving phi uh, uh, intentional space of a uh, you know like. Uh, when, when a Wiccan pass, uh, uh, makes a curse or a blessing or a, whatever they're doing or it's some kind of intention, they put it inside a pet because it gives it life. You know, and 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 that's it's giving this this ring form life and motion and, and energy and uh, conveying that into the into the planet in, in scale. You can see the Teton Earth ring over there, marked by the arc of, of those mountains. Uh, you can see the the arc coming out of the Great Falls ring, radiating out to the the continental ring. Uh, this is all described, not this particular image, but the the, the idea of the continent uh, being circular, as I uh, explained in the book guy matrix. Uh, so yeah, let's go on to the next one. We're running out of time here, and so uh, you know, after going through all of this, you know, just all these rings everywhere. And, you know where does the where does it all? You know, how do how do we just what what is the gesture of bestowing mm -hmm. that that we can place upon our, our world? And how does the Great Lakes uh, play into that? So I, I was called. I do these these land studies, and I was uh, called upon to look at uh, Costa Rica. What's happening in Costa Rica? There are all these spiritual centers down there. Mm -hmm. are, they want to create these uh, these new age centers there. So. Uh, I, I, I did this little study of Costa Rica and found that there is these the linear linear lines that the, the edges of the peninsula is coming out and on, onto its uh, south coast uh, and, and its alignment of mountains through it. We're all in parallel lines. Well, one of them followed this volcanic line. And so, well, let's see where those volcanoes go. 
And it ended up going in a straight line right up the string of volcanoes to the Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan in Mexico. So it's, it's like ley lines feed sacred sites. It, it's like it's it's like New York City is a sacred site. It has five five ley lines coming into it. So uh, it places a lot of creativity. It always have these ley lines. Going. So. But I took that into meditation in context of the Great Lakes, and I just started seeing this, you know, this gesture of the continent, and how that how that ley line out through uh, Mexico City uh, related to the Great Lakes, and came up with this this, this form that uh, you know takes in that the, all all the shape of the Great Lakes and the the, the dynamism of the planet into a single gesture. Now. Uh, I just lived in Arizona for the past four years working on a earth ring down there. Um, and I, I was trying to, you know, we were bringing water to the West. That was really part of the project. And I was out blessing this earth ring that I created using nine stones to replicate the planet and to replicate gravity so that my intention would, would uh, be held as a gravity form. And uh, I wanted water to come, so I was out there blessing with water, walking along the lines and creating the geometry of the water. But I, I finished, I just had this intuition to finish it off with my, with a, uh, a picture that I used that I would just cast it with my hands and, I, and with my arm, and I'd go around doing this, and, and it's like, it's the same thing, it's the same form that I was making and it was just because of the five proportion of my hand in the release of this water it generated a five proportion spiral as you see there on the screen wow. and you see that in the, uh, in the girl's hair in her uh, you know, that's, that's those are five a series of five uh, uh, squares that generate a five rectangle and the same thing with the frozen water Demonstration there. Is that the Fibonacci spiral? That's the Fibonacci spiral. Yeah. So here we, you know, this this the stone, and and just the, you know, feeling the the Great Lakes as this the stone that that we're, we're at this this apex of of grace that uh, that that is part of the world. Um, uh, the, the, the the lakes will. Become enlivened. The water will become structured. The water will return to health. And and this is this is only done. You know, okay. You know, humans have part of it, but there's also uh, the elemental forces that are also at work all around us. And you know, that it has to be this collaboration between the material world, which we ground in our third dimension, and the and the uh, and the beings of these other dimensions that. That also co collaborate, co create with us. So, and that's that's that monolith that you see at the Sioux Locks. It came from Connecticut, by the way, that <laughs> stony to Connecticut. So, so you could have one, up one more. Yeah, extend to say five minutes more. If you be nice that, so that'd five. be the max. Yeah. All right. Now I got another slide. Let me see what we got here. So uh, again, looking at this as sacred, you know, we have the hands above, so below. Uh, that's the Indiana Jones cup. Uh, <laughs> uh, from the uh, uh, Wiki Commons and uh, the Sombrero Galaxy. That's just the, this, this idea of, you know, or it's, this, it's the grail, you know, holy grail vortex that, that, that we have before. Uh, yeah, no, thanks. Next one, and we got, I think we have one more. Oh, no, no, oops, did I go to fire? Oh, did you go back one? Yeah. There you go, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, this image of, of uh, Jesus was one that was manifested by this uh Hindu mystic uh, named Sai Baba when yeah. the car thing, oh, yeah. I know, yeah. so he, he, he came up with this one, is what, what Jesus looked like. And uh, so it kind of it conveys the energy of the man. So, uh, you know, Jesus came and the Christ came to create the new temple. And uh, the Jews are, you know, go, oh, we got to create the third temple. 
And, and really, the, the third temple is the planet itself, in my in my estimation. Yeah. And, and that's what, but with, with the, the mystery of Golgotha, when Jesus, you know, shed his blood into into the waters of the world, you know, that that holiness. Uh, of, of his being became part of the waters and became part of the world. You know, Jesus isn't coming again. He, he hasn't left. <laughs> yeah. He's still here. <laughs> so, you know, uh, honoring the waters as as the, the, the waters of Jesus is really uh, you know, what the, the message is here. In the end of the stuff. I just... Google the Pajiwa lady that walked yeah. there. Like, that's her name, Josephine. If anybody wants to yeah. uh, Google that, there's a whole big article about it. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. Thank you. Great, great first. Very, very close. Then those those stones are the the limestone. Oh, that was one last piece there. The limestone. Uh, <laughs> Of the this is uh, of the, uh, uh, the 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 wall at, in Jerusalem the, the wailing wall that's what you see in the background here mm. that's what's left after Titus destroyed the second temple. Uh, everywhere you you see limestone you find sacred sites like uh, the mm. south of England Stonehenge, oh, you know, uh, Jerusalem limestone. Uh, uh, the uh, Great Pyramids, limestone, uh, France, Shark Cathedral, limestone. So the, the, it's like the, the nearest we have to a living rock is limestone. And uh, you know, the sure shells is very, very new rock. So, you know, what is that? It's, it's almost like, a, you know, it's like, what would our limestone be? Our bones, our, our, our ganglia. So this is kind of a, the limestone, I think, is the ganglia of the planet. And it's it's what attenuates uh, it, it, uh, our, our, our neurons of the ganglia. So every neuron has uh, nine ganglia cells. So and, and, and these ganglia cells operate on frequency rather than on, on electricity. So uh, you know you can you know put oil on your feet and and, and taste it in your in your mouth almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. So so it, 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 that travels faster than the speed of light, where the electrons mm -hmm. will travel at the speed of light. So by, by the Great Lakes being saturated with all this limestone mm -hmm. and other minerals, uh, electronic minerals like copper and and iron and mm -hmm. uh, you know, all these conductive forms. You you have a beautiful mix of you know creating a a dynamic uh, energized space like a cathedral might be. Uh, wow. what you, what you Thank you so much. So we'll go to the last slide here, which is just a reminder to uh, think, uh, feel, and will uh, these uh, pure spirit waters uh, into into being. Uh, I. I, I Identify pent water on there is kind of like, oh, you know, they're, they're, this is the pent water, and uh, and using that that just that simple little shape form. Uh, it, 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 in my head, it frames it as sacred. Mm -hmm. it, it, it it creates it, it holds a gravity and 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 it gives a life giving form you know, for our intention that we hold uh, the Great Lakes as a sacred site. Thanks. Wow. Oh, we do that oh, yeah. Thank you. That was very good. Yeah. There's more on the website. Uh, I, 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 we're continuing. We're continuing the research and looking at that relationship. I it's kind of the uh, the epitome of how we deal with the instructions. I don't know, 300 words all over the 
is Basilica of Mary and Cathedral. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.